Regardless of any academic hoity-toityness, I believe that humans have been largely the same for as long as our species has existed. Not in a truly biological and definitely not in a cultural way, but that we have always needed and wanted the same things, have always looked for beauty in nature, and strived to recreate what we see to speak to others, which is basically just art. Every new piece of evidence continues to prove my belief true, and one such object shows we have always used art as a way to express our horniness. Paleo art is simply the art of extinct life. This is almost exclusively animals that have been extinct for a very long time, as I am not so sure we would lump the thylacine under the banner of paleontology, but topics often overlap. There is another form of art that can be informally referred to as paleo art, art that was made during prehistoric times. It's truly paleo art. The oldest known art that seems to have been made intentionally and with some purposeful workmanship is up for debate because art is subjective and our fossil record isn't the best of all the animal groups. That being said, the oldest evidence that is the least contested goes back to 40,000 years ago. There are a bunch of much older examples, but every archaeologist, paleoanthropologist, paleontologist and their dog have something to say about them. If we go back further in our history, there is evidence our ancient cousins and ancestors were doing funny things with materials around them that some might define as art. As a non-anthropologist or archaeologist specialist, I would be the first to admit that I have a very broad definition of art. As an artist from a family of artists, I would also be the first one to admit my bias towards the subjectivity of art. One of the biggest issues with prehistoric art is how to recognize iconicity. That is, how can one tell that ancient human and near human species recognized an object they found, made, or modified as an icon or to represent an abstract meaning? mostly boils down to the complicated intersection of cognitive evolution, hominid perception, and consciousness. In 1984, Professor Lutz Fiedler from Marburg University was working at Site A-84-2, which appeared to be the foundation of an Acheulean dwelling that mostly consisted of a bunch of stone tools on the surface near Urfaud and Rissani in eastern Morocco, when he collected a strange-looking object that he described as a manuport. A manuport is simply a funny object that someone picks up and takes with them without doing anything to it. A fancy word for keepsake. Anything from stones to shells to fossils. These sorts of objects are presumably collected for their aesthetics or maybe even meaning attributed to them. We of course still do this today. The A-84-2 site is about 330 kilometers directly east of Marrakesh and south of the High Atlas Mountains, making the region an arid desert of pebbles, sand, and scrub. The site has a bunch of densely clustered piles of darkly colored stone tools that have been identified as late Acheulean. Acheulean is the name given to a bunch of tools of a specific type that appeared during the Lower Paleolithic, around 1.95 million to 130,000 years ago. These aren't the most exact ways of dating things, as in paleontology, but it was the traditional way of separating different periods of human development and has been realigned to more precise dates. The Acheulean tool piles at the A-84-2 site are about 6 meters across and are made up of stone that would have been of such a large size before napping that they would have had to have been brought into the area from somewhere else. There seems to be the remains of a dwelling at the site as well. The dwelling and tool association here is not unusual, and similar instances have been found in many other sites across Africa, Europe, and India. The Manuport Fieldler found was not fully described until 2002 by Robert Bednarik. It's pretty much just a solidified fragment of a cephalopod fossil cast. Bednarik identifies the specimen as belonging to an ancient cuttlefish and says it dates to the Devonian or Carboniferous periods. 
Bednarik obviously didn't look too much into the paleontology of the Manuport or cephalopods in general, because he tentatively labeled the fossil as belonging to the genus Orthoceros, which is not a cuttlefish. Instead, being a shelled nautiloid cephalopod. But he did get the time right. Cuttlefish are relatively recent for cephalopods, seeming to appear as early as the Cretaceous period. However, to be nice to the guy, the actual paleontology of the specimen is its least important aspect. Then again, maybe Bednarik's identification is based on that made by Fieldler, and I should be even less hard on him. The 2002 paper states that cuttlefish fossils are quite common in other parts of Morocco, but they do not occur naturally in the region of the find site. However, it would make more sense that the idea is that of an orthocerid cephalopod since those actually are famously very common in parts of Morocco, alongside ammonites and other sea squishies, but not necessarily cuttlefish. Though my research didn't find any great references to cuttlefish fossils in Morocco, I wouldn't be surprised if they are there. I did, however, find that some fossil dealers label orthosaurid fossils as cuttlefish, so maybe it's just a weird Chinese telephone game. It's not important, but you know I had to get nerdy with that paleontology part of this. The manuport is dark in color, meaning it has grown a manganese oxide patina on the outside, similar to the stone tools around the site. Bednarik writes that this probably means the object was carried a long distance from wherever it was found, though it could also be from sitting around the site for a couple hundred thousand years after the people there left or died. The darn thing is 67.4 millimeters long, 34.3 millimeters wide at its widest point, and 32.8 millimeters thick at 90 degrees to that width and to the long axis. But as everyone knows, it's not length, but thickness that matters. The thickness of the broken base of the object ranges from 23.7 millimeters to 26.2 millimeters. The manuport surface has a rugose texture. Without damaging the specimen, Bednarik thinks the inside is just made up of chalcedonic silica, so chert or chalcedony, which is a variation on silica. As far as any observations can be certain, nobody modified the manuport. There are no scrapes, indents, or cuts, but any of those sorts of marks could have been eroded over the millennia. So uh, why was it picked up and brought to the site? Now we can finally get to the dilt, I mean, elephant in the room. That's a penis. Someone collected this thing because it looks like a, quote, perfectly naturalistic and life-size, non-erect human penis, end quote. The only explanation here that makes sense is that some form of hominid found the dick rock and brought it with them to the dwelling. This sort of interpretation of events shouldn't be that controversial, since the object is likely only a couple hundred thousand years old, well within the window for humans or another very close variation of human to interpret the object as a dick rock. I mean, who doesn't appreciate certain visual properties, am I right? The Urfoud Manuport is therefore not an unexpected find, but at the time of its publication, and according to Bednarik, it apparently challenged the hypothesis that pre-Upper Paleolithic hominids lacked both symbolism and the ability to perceive iconicity. Now, this object could have been collected by another species or subspecies of the Homo genus or Homo sapiens species, I'm thinking like a Neanderthal or something, but the known range of the Neanderthals did not stretch down into Morocco or any other North African regions. That being said, the dating of the Urfoud Manuport does overlap with the Neanderthals, who only went extinct about 40,000 years ago. Plus, Morocco is practically touching tips with Spain, and Neanderthals were in Spain. Then again, there is no reason here to suspect one type of human over another. I just think it would be neat if a Neanderthal thought the penis rock was funny. I am biased towards the idea that Neanderthals were far more human than many will admit. Anyway, that's the Urfoud Manuport. Just a cool little artifact of a prehistoric dirty mind. Someone I'd like to sit down and have a beer with. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.
Thank you.